Well, here we are on day four of our generosity challenge. Let's get started. So I've been continuing to read about the days and the events that led up to Jesus's arrest, the trial, the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection. And we've been talking about the generosity of God through these days. Romans 5, 8 says this, that, that God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And we've been walking through some of the things that happened on that journey into Jerusalem. And as they arrived in Jerusalem and the palm branches went down, right after that, Luke records in Luke chapter 19 that Jesus enters into the temple area. And for the second time uh, in the Gospels, we find that Jesus is going to drive the money changers out. And uh, he's going to say, no, this, my father's house is going to be a house of prayer. And of course, we know from the, the first account when it happened that he overturned the tables and he drove them out. And you might ask the question, well, what does all of that have to do with generosity? Well, think of it this way. Uh, when Jesus went into the temple area and he saw how the Father's house was being used, he said, no, wait a minute. Uh, th this was set aside. This was given for holy purposes. And I think we would all agree about that. But have you ever considered this? Everything that you have, every possession that you have, every material possession, every moment of every day, every dollar that you have came from God and belongs to God and is intended for holy purposes. Yes, part of that is, is, is that God takes care of our needs. That's a holy purpose of, of God. But what about those things beyond our needs? Well, you know, things like, what are you saying, Pastor? My iPhone? Uh, are you talking about internet at home or, or cable TV or the extra car in my driveway or the extra food that uh, I need or eat beyond my needs. Well, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And I'm the first to say I'm, I'm guilty too. But I'm examining those things more and more as I'm thinking about the generosity of God and this challenge to live our lives so generously. And I want you to consider that as well. So go in, read that account in Luke 19, and, and consider that the reason Jesus was upset was it was intended for a holy purpose. So is everything that God has given me. So is everything that God has given you. So continue to take this challenge. Continue to find out just how much we learn about the generosity of God by being generous ourselves. And look how God transforms us and conforms us to the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ, by our generosity. Before we leave today, I want to thank all of you who have been emailing me back and, and sharing your stories with me, stories of things that you've done for, for neighbors and stories that you've done for friends and stories that you've done for other people in the church and stories that you have done for total strangers. <laughs> You know, even, even in a registration office, handing somebody a Snickers bar. It's a small token, I realize, but it was a huge blessing. Thank you for the pictures you've sent, and let me encourage all of you to continue to do that, and all of you to continue to stay on this generosity challenge as we walk towards Resurrection Sunday, this Sunday morning, and our celebration. God bless you, and I'll see you on day five.